and welcome to figure skating mess the 2022-2023 season has already begun with philadelphia summer and cranberry cup so we we've got an old fast look at most of the top american and canadian skaters and let's go through the competition we'll begin with philadelphia summer which was won by the junior world champion Isabel Vito from America. This was her first senior international competition and she delivered. She showed us two new programs. I really like the short one, which was this tango inspired program. I, as usual, she pays wonderful attention to the details in the music, despite her young age of only 15 years old. She has this natural charisma. Uh, I'm not a fan of her long program though. I don't know why, it just doesn't excite me yet, but her dress is gorgeous. However, I am really worried about her jumping technique. It, you can really see that her idols, the ones she looks up to, are the Eterity to Barista girls because she has that same like style on the eyes and the same jumping technique which is not something you want to take after because uh, it is overly bending of the body and the knees before the jump that is not good in the long run and i don't want to see her retire before she's 20 like i want to see what she can do with it, her artistry when she's 20 when she's 25 what that will evolve to you because that is only gonna get better with time right let's move on to someone who is the opposite of isabeau that is her teammate lindsay thorngreen also a 15 year old she came second in this competition and third at junior worlds this year and she hasn't got this amazing artistry that isabeau's got going on but she has a good solid technique and when i watch lindsay i just feel Calm. Like his skating is very soothing, it makes me relax, it makes me feel safe for some reason. I think I prefer Isabel's short but Lindsay's free. Like Lindsay's free program, it has a lot of interesting stuff going on. It's very well composed, it has a cartwheel. I can't help but love a good cartwheel. I know some people are tired of it, but it's in my DNA to love a cartwheel, okay? Okay? Don't kill me. <laughs> uh, Anyways, I think this is a program that can really grow throughout this season too and help Lindsay bring out some artistry, yeah? And it's gonna be so exciting to see these two girls battling out throughout the season uh, because they are such opposites. Then in third place, we haven't got a junior but a very well established senior, Gracie Gold, who made a smashing come back she finally delivered two back-to-back -back clean flawless program the only flaws was like in a free skate at the end she doubled out on a few triples because of the lack of stamina but otherwise i'm thrilled to have her back in shape and she looked like she looked so proud on that podium and she should be she should be so proud of herself for that comeback. That was it for the Philadelphia summer. Um, it was exactly the same in the short and the free, the top three spots, like Isabeau gold, Lindsay silver, Gracie bronze. That is a stark contrast to the Cranberry Cup. The Cranberry Cup was all over the place, chaos. Let's begin with a short program, which was won by Madeleine Skisas from Canada, who showed us a very intriguing short program to the Black Swan. In second place, we surprisingly enough had Jocelyn from New Zealand. I had never heard of her before. She was apparently 14th in Four Continents this year, but she definitely deserved that to second place. It was spellbinding, honestly, truly spellbinding. Like, she interpreted every single note of that music beautifully and her dress is to die for and it's perfect to the music too. Then in third place came Audrey Shin from America and in fourth place we have a surprise, Sonia Hilma who is actually a new favourite of mine. She delivered a banger of a short program. I will talk 
more about her later in the free. Uh, then someone who had a disastrous short program was Amber Glenn. She began, she began actually quite good. Yes, she popped that first axle, but she delivered an amazing triple-triple combination and she skated to hit the road jack, amazing music and good like powerful interpretation too to it. But then she popped her triple loop and I felt like after that all of the energy went out of her. Like she, she didn't try as much anymore and she couldn't match that powerful music. She also fell on her cartwheel. A really bad cartwheel too. I do love a cartwheel as a sad, but that wasn't a good cartwheel. Despite my love of them, she she should cut that out of the program. And like a step sequence was ranked a one, which is the lowest you can get. She ended up in eleventh place, and was it was just we shouldn't talk about it anymore. Let's talk about her free instead. Night and day, I would say. Night and day. Yes, she fell on a downgraded triple axle, but otherwise it was flawless. It was magnificent. Such a beautiful dress too, to skate in. And it was so good that she won the free skate. And that took her from 11th to third place overall. Yes, she came third despite that disastrous short program. Like amazing and applaud here. Uh, then we over to Sonia Hilmer, my new favorite, who came fourth in the short and let's talk about this because one of the main reasons I love her is that she has created her own unique jump. She has a triple salco, double salco because apparently she can jump from like turn boats both ways when she jumps. I think it's because she had an in injury and a muscle imbalance at one time so she was like she was forced to jump the other way but like it was so cool I've never seen this before. I love like interventions in figure skating and she is apparently working on a triple circle double loose and a triple loose double loose too that's like I don't know, I think it's so cool and unique and she, I also like her artistry, she's very powerful and unique in it too and I'm just totally blown away by this skater and she has barely competed like before I look at, looked at skating scores and she has like two competition on an international level before, two, that's like nothing. And she's 20, like she's not a junior, that is. I, I just love to see a, a late bloomer in figure skating. We're so used to see, you know, some people peak when they are 14, 15 from Russia. But she has like barely even competed before. And then she comes out as this amazing 20 year old who has her unique jumps and unique artistry. I forgot to mention, she came second in this competition. She got a silver medal. Oh my god! Uh, let's move on to Jocelyn from New Zealand who came second in the short program but fell down to fifth place after the free. Like, she didn't do anything terrible in the free. She didn't have this huge mistake but she had like a few of them overall and that brought it all down. But she had a beautiful dress. Look at it! Like, it's marvelous when it's spinning. Chef's kiss. Then we have Madeline Skiza from Canada who was in the golden position after the short program and she began the free skate beautifully. She skated to West Side Story. However, in the last three jumps she fell and she also fell down all the way to fourth place. So no medal for her but she was like less than half a point behind Amber. Like, less than half a point that is nothing but it was amber who got the bronze and the girl went to audrey shane from america who was third in the short second in the free and first overall that was everything for these two competitions and i am so excited that this season has already begun despite it being like so hot and <laughs> in the middle of august in the summer but yeah, which uh, programs did you think was the most exciting ones? I think, in my opinion, it must be Lindsay Thorngren's free program, but also Madeleine Skisa's short 
Jocelyn's from New Zealand's short and, and maybe yeah Amber um, Glenn's short too if she can have a clean skate there yeah that was everything for today and you'll see me soon in another video bye